where we were, where we are, and where we're going. I'm Annette Abercrombie, actually Annette Cook Abercrombie. A lot of people who are my age will know me as. And I want to share some of my memories and the history of the early days of Todd School. My older sister went to the old Altera School, but my age group were the first ones that actually started here in first grade. And that summer before, we had a little kindergarten, and it was just for six weeks. It was a lot of singing, play, and of course we had our time on the carpet where we had a towel and we would lay down and for 20 minutes and listen to music. So then we started school that, ne that September and so we were actually the first class to start and never have gone to Altera and start through Todd. Some of my um, best memories are is our Christmas programs and the May festivals. We always had a May festival and there was a lot of dancing. Uh, my first grade was a mixed grade. We had some students from first grade and some that were in second grade in that classroom. And we had what was considered probably by many what back then a spinster. Her name was Miss Richards. Um, second grade, I got a teacher that was always really special to me, and her name was Miss Lopez. She was Spanish, and she just seemed to enjoy us so much. And look, she taught us some Spanish dances, and we learned to sing some Christmas songs in Spanish. And for a long time, I could still sing those songs because she had taught us those. Actually, we were the first uh, group of kids to start the West Junior High and never go to Altera also. So we got to break out the brand new schools. West Junior High had sports programs. The boys and the girls teams always did well. It seemed like we, everybody was very competitive and very skilled. And so when we played other schools, it was a pretty good competition and they won a lot of the ball games we did. My favorite teacher and one that the one that really made me want to be a teacher was Miss Bailey. I thought that she, I loved history and I had her for three years and I also had English from her. And I just thought she was so wonderful. She'd gone to Europe after she, somewhere in her college years and then she had an adventure. She was born and raised in Ohio and she came out here to teach. and. So even when I went to college and took History 170, there were a lot of things. I was like, oh, I remember learning this from Miss Bailey. And my roommate one day, she said, sometimes you don't even study. How do you get such good scores? And I said, I actually remember this stuff from my teacher, Miss Bailey. Um, so I really attribute to her the most that I wanted to be a teacher. I went on, I went to Union and graduated and I went on to college and I met my husband after about two or three years and I decided no more college and I got married. <laughs> and the place I ended it back was almost right where I grew up and my husband's not even a native of Utah. So, uh, however, my kids being in the boundary for Todd they started to go to school here and I decided to volunteer as a mother and I just really enjoyed that. And so I decided, well, you know what? I'll start substituting. And I did that and then I got a job as the music teacher and as a aide and a lot of people too, especially Mr. Summers and Marilyn Martin and said, you know what? You seem to really enjoy this you know, you've got a lot of college done, go back and finish and do what, what you want to do. So I did, and I thought I'd never make it because I was so old already, but the time went by and I became a teacher here at, well, it was back at Todd's still then. I've gone on, uh, still here with the new Eagle View. Um, I've always liked this community and felt like it was my home, and so I've really not had a desire to teach anywhere else. I still love the kids, but I really enjoy it, and I probably will retire here before very long, but this has always been home to me, and I enjoy it. It's a great community. 
Hey, my name is Forrest Kutch. I was born and raised here in the Uinta Basin. Um, I attended uh, public schools, uh, Todd Elementary, West Junior High School, um, one year at Union High School. Uh, then I left the area to attend a private school. I have uh, very fond memories of um, the elementary school, Todd Elementary. Um, I remember my first teacher, uh, her name was uh, Miss Richards, and we um, always called her Old Lady Richards. She, uh, she was very strict, very firm with us. And when you're a kid, you don't understand that. You, you tend to uh, judge a person as being mean or something, when in fact they're just trying to be um, trying to do their jobs. And working with children is always a challenge. And she was that way, but she was uh, the ultimate profession professional teacher because she really did teach us a lot. And she, she just didn't put up with any nonsense. And so she demanded the, uh, good behavior in the classroom. And uh, if you didn't respect that, you, you learned quickly <laughs> to respect it. But um, in the end, I have very fond memories. I think she influenced me the most of all the elementary teachers. At Todd, I remember the Awesams, um, and and Miss Guzman and uh, uh, Miss Rollins. Um, these were good teachers. These were good people. Um, <laughs> this is the festivals, the uh, uh, freshman frolic at West Junior High School. Uh, bring back fond memories. It was kind of an interesting school because it was about 50-50 Indian and non-Indian in attendance and we all pretty much got along. Um, uh, there wasn't a race barrier. Um, in fact, I never really felt any racial tension until I got into junior high school. And then it was very subtle, and very um, covert, not overt. I think any of the racial tensions um, mostly existed on the east side of UNA School District having to do with school policy um, and um, politics. But as far as the west side schools, uh, both Todd and West Junior High School, the teachers did the best they could. My name's Kathleen Chigup and Larry has asked me to just think about my time as an educator and as I was going to school, I'm going to Todd School, West Junior High. Todd School was a school that was built with the Native American students and the um, um, Caucasian students. I always thought it was a hoping that we could mesh and we could become working partners and there was something about that group of students that I met, Larry Sespooch, Vivian Syreach, Marjorie Anchorpon, Forrest Koch, Carlos Reed, Joseph Pinnacoos, Louise Ridley. For some reason, we just had that. We're going to do just as well and better. And it was proving to the white students, yeah, there was no difference between the, the youth learner and the white learner. But it seemed like the teachers back then were, were there to teach. They weren't there and looking at students like, oh, they're Native Americans, they're youths, they're whites, they're... Um, I think they taught to the skill of the student. They um, pushed students as far as a student would go and even to where they challenged the student. Todd School was special too because we had two visiting, or um, three visiting, well I remember the three Hawaiian teachers. One was a couple, Mr. and Mrs. Awesome, and one was, a, might have been a friend or relative, Mrs. Guzman. And um, 
every spring they had, um, we had festivals, spring festivals and we had winter festivals. And in the spring festival, they were Hawaiian. One year they kind of geared the theme to that blue Hawaii. And I was one of the princesses. I remember Linda Pawini and Le Grand Redfoot as um, the king and queen. And Connie Murray and myself were um, the, the um, flower girls, I guess, sort of. And then, then they had um, um, the islands represented by different um, individuals. And then we had the classrooms all um, chose a Hawaiian dance or song. And the parents got into it. The family got involved. The communities got involved. Uh, the day, final day of the um, program, the lawn was lined up with parents and community. And in the winter festival, we chose a theme. And I remember the winter wonderland. I always remember Ronald Norcho skating. <laughs> and each classroom chose a, a winter activity or something, a song or dance. And again, the families participated. And slowly, the schools began to think, oh, there's no time for all these activities. There's no time to spend. We're wasting time. But you know that socializing, that getting the parents, getting the community, that was the, the, the education part of um, learning too. And I don't see that in the schools very much anymore. Academics is just not the only learning that takes place at, a, at, a, at the school. Todd School was special also in that it, that it drew in these other communities like White Rocks. They closed their um, school. It drew in La Pointe and Tridel. Gusher came to our school. Randlett, Fort Duchesne, I don't know how far west, um, I think through Ballard anyway. I don't remember much. Um, discrimination. Oh, there were remarks, and like I said, some you know, I always felt a little bit from my own um, people than I did the others. But I don't remember the outright bullying, the outright um, name calling, the outright um, that made students not want to come to school. It, it, it was just a special school, and I will always remember, I think, I learned the most academically at Todd School than I have at any other school. Then we went to West Junior High, that was just a, a, a continuing of the same students that I had gone to school with at Todd. I knew I was capable of learning, which we all were. It's just that we grew up differently and we learned different things. I always wanted to be a teacher, and I think Todd School was always my where I wanted to be. Luckily, I was able to get a job with the Uinta School District, and I taught first grade for two years, and then I went into special education. I went to the University of Utah and graduated in 1996 with my master's degree in education. And then I felt like I had accomplished pretty much right the goals, educational goals I had set for myself, except I got into the intern um, um, administrative certificate and then became the principal here for one year. My name is Tina Daniels. Um, I went to school at Todd and West starting in the second grade. My children went to school at Todd and West and I have taught at Todd slash Eagle View for 16 years. I started as a music teacher, then the librarian, and I've been in the classroom for six years teaching seventh and eighth grade. I loved Todd and West. Absolutely loved it. 
I haven't been to one of my high school reunions, but I would go anywhere for a West Junior High ninth grade reunion. <laughs> Those are my fondest memories. And that is one of the reasons I fought so hard for these schools is because I wanted my children to have that same wonderful experience that I had going to Todd and West. And you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. It was my best, my best school memories are right here. And that's what I tell my students. I said, I went here, and I know your parents, your grandparents, I, I know them. I went to school with them, and it was a wonderful experience. We had the freshman frolic, our ninth grade dance. I remember the band class, the music, and we actually at that time got invited to go play for Vernal. We had such a good music program. I remember Gail Herbert, of course, in the office. She ran the place, kept it together. If it wasn't for Gail, I don't know. But Gail also knew and loved the kids, and she knew their individual circumstances, and she knew, you know, she, she cared for them enough that she was there for them, and they knew that. And that was awesome. I remember Mr. Jorgensen in the library and his photography classes and being on the yearbook staff. At that time, we had football, we had basketball, volleyball, cheerleading, drill team, the whole thing. Um, I was student body president my ninth grade year. That was a lot of fun to do that and interact with the kids. Oh, Mr. Coleman and Mr. Davis. Guy Coleman and Ace Davis. I remember their classes. Ace Davis had a totalitarian government class and I remember he, he made us dress in white shirts and Levi's and we had to memorize the law and if we didn't, if we didn't, no, curl, no curly hair, no nothing. And if we broke the rule, then his wrestlers would, you know, they were his police. And he, you know, you'd go out and shovel gravel into a little can. And, and uh, then one day we overthrew him and, and a bunch of his wrestlers tackled him and stuffed him in the trash can. And that was his overthrowing the government. But that was his way of teaching us about the totalitarian government. I've never forgot it. It was great. It's, it was a great great lesson. They were so excited and, and you know, Mr. Col Guy Coleman, he never fell asleep in his class because he was up and down the aisles and if he was telling you about history and somebody got shot, then he'd fall on the floor. And probably those two that I talked about and Mr. Woolard, he was a, a good math teacher. He was my sixth grade teacher and then he moved up and went through West and, and so I think those those were probably very instrumental in me becoming a teacher. And then coming back, I, after I got married, I came back and I substituted here at, at Todd and at West. And being in the classroom with the kids again and actually taught with Mr. Willard, you know, they were, some of the teachers were still here. And that's when I kind of said, you know, I kind of like this. And I always knew that this is where I wanted to teach. I didn't want to teach anywhere else. I wanted to teach at Todd or West or Eagle View once it became Eagle View. That's just, that's just, this is just home to me. You know, I've had other people call and say, hey, come, no, these are my kids. This is where I stay. One of the things we learned is that um, our students are mostly right-brained. We're not really a scientific people. We're more in, we operate mostly in the, um, in the arts and in the healing arts and um, then later on we transition to scientific learning. Uh, it's not that we can't be high high tech people, it's just that a majority of our people are more, uh, lean more in those fields. Uh, we'll always have about 10 or 15 percent of our kids that do well in math and science but the majority of our people are, are um, in the other areas. I always felt that in fact, I was one of the few that supported us having our own school district because I was hoping to influence the policy uh, to change the curriculum to make it more conducive to our students. But um, that didn't work out. So, and I wanted our, our people to have a greater say, a greater voice in education. Uh, we've never really had a voice in the school system. I don't think we've had one person e elected to the school board. And that's very unfortunate. So we need to work on that. I'll just say the first superintendent, he, he was very um, old school. In fact, he was back in the antebellum days because he really didn't think too much of uh, Native people. He uh, was very prejudiced, narrow-minded. And he basically was one of the people who influenced policy to keep most of the money on the east side of the school district. Uh, he was one of the people 
and also his successors who uh, constantly discriminated against our students by um, encouraging the best student uh, teachers to stay on the east side and sending the less productive teachers to the west side. Um, that did happen, that did occur. One of the things we did uh, that made a big difference, I think, or contributed to improvement was we, um, we learned about teacher training programs uh, that were being operated by various tribes throughout the country to try to improve education. They were contracting with colleges and universities to um, edu educate and train teachers um, for um, schools attended by Indian students. We were successful in getting a grant uh, under the Department of Education. Um, we first contracted with Brigham Young University's um, elementary uh, school program, uh, college program of education, and they did a good job. In fact, um, over the four-year period, uh, five-year period, we were able to graduate eight of 10 students, and that was the highest achievement um, rate in the nation. And so um, that was a wonderful program. Of the eight trainees, I think about six of them uh, stayed in the, uh, or, or entered the public schools uh, locally. And most of them uh, are now retired. Um, I don't know if all six uh, stayed uh, to retirement, but most of them did accomplish um, uh, a long career here in the schools and having Indian role models in the classroom did a lot to help our students. Uh, my own son benefited greatly. He uh, speaks highly of um, um, uh, Mrs. Thompson, uh, Gloria Thompson. Um, she had a married name, uh, Aragart, but he always called her um, uh, teacher uh, Thompson and he she taught him a lot and inspired him so she was one of the uh, Indian teachers trained in our teacher training program so that was one of our accomplishments we also uh, started up the Johnson O'Malley program which was discontinued before I got uh, on board we started it up again and we hired teacher aides to uh, provide some uh, tutoring assistance in the schools. I think that program has continued to this day. But I will have to say that uh, Eagle View um, Middle School has, has uh, made some changes. The Uinta School District has, my understanding, made some commitments to, to upgrade the program and there are some results um, to show that the students are doing better and I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, but again, I have to say this, the, the teachers that did come to the west side, they did the best they could. And some of them, in fact, were some of the best teachers in spite of that, that attitude. Um, uh, we, had, we still had good teachers. So in the end, I have um, um, fond memories and I feel that I received an, an adequate education. In some areas, a superior education because some of uh, my classmates um, and peers have, have gone on and done well in this life. Uh, they've accomplished great things. I've been involved with the school since forever. Uh, as soon as my children started, then I became a member of the PTA, Chris White and Shara Padilla. Uh, grabbed Virginia and I and we became part of the PTA and so we've been involved in the school since then. We've seen lots of things. If you're going to look at the history of Todd and West and Eagle View, you have to go back to when it was Todd and West before La Point Elementary was built. When they built La Point Elementary and took those students then West was still the school for those students to come down, here, get down to for their secondary education. Um, as we looked back in the history, we tried to find where that changed, where the school district made a specific decision to bus uh, Tridell and LaPointe to Vernal. We couldn't find that, but somehow that started to happen. And so students started to be pulled away from West and with the declining population, it started to lose programs, started to lose opportunities for the students because the money follows, the, the WPU follows the student. And so that's kind of when the struggle started, especially for West, to keep afloat, to keep programs going. Todd saw some of that as more students left West, 
then and went to Vernal, more students pulled out and decided to go to Roosevelt. And that caused a further trickle and decline of students for programs. At some point, uh, the school district, I believe, was offered to the tribe at one point. The school here was offered to the tribe at one point to see if they wanted to run it. Uh, we, at one point, the people from Tridell and La Pointe and what we called the crossovers, those that were going to Roosevelt to school, approached the commissioners and the school board with a plan, new boundaries, and they wanted to give Todd and West to Duchesne School District and draw a boundary that just across the river, I believe, and would send all the rest to Vernal. And we, Gloria Thompson, Maxine Natchez, Jay Groves was instrumental. We went out into the communities and we did um, we had them sign petitions saying that they were against it. We took it to the school board, that wasn't enough. We had to actually have a vote here at the school and we fought to have it just those that would be impacted, those that would be moved to Duchesne School District got to vote to say whether we wanted that or not. And the overriding, overwhelming vote was that no, we wanted to stay in you in a school district, we just wanted them to take care of us. So there's been a big struggle with Todd and West and getting support from the UNA school district. And at times we had you know, really good people on the board that did their best to try and support us, Dr. Nelson, Dr. Spenlove to name a few. But at other times it was a real struggle to get what we needed here for our students and to keep our schools. We just wanted to keep our schools. Duchesne district at one time jumped in and they wanted extra money for what they called the crossovers that were going into uh, their schools, K through eight and it became a very big issue with the union contract and they weren't going to renew it if they didn't get more money for the crossovers and we didn't feel like we should send anything over and above the WPU and the state formula that was already in place. So that became a battle back and forth all about the same time. So it was, it was a real struggle. Um, we've gained more and more support from the district and they have made decisions that have helped us to get where we are today. Uh, one of those was to build the new school. And I remember I was on a committee to go around and visit other schools and they were going to prioritize repairs and different things that needed to be done so that they could, they could do a vote and get the money to do that from the community. So I went around and there were some real needs in the Vernal area. The two schools over there were not safe. And they had also prioritized once they built the two new schools that they would make improvements to Todd and to West and fix those because there were some structural issues. Uh, Todd had been built and West built in the 50s and there was you know just lots of structural issues. Well once they got the new schools built they had a meeting and they were not going to make the improvements to Todd and West. And they had a meeting in the community you know members showed up and I can remember that meeting very well and, and we weren't happy and I told them, I said I served on that committee and I promised the people, they told me, Tina, they won't do it. They'll fix the schools in Vernal and they won't fix ours and I said no they won't. They promised that that wouldn't happen. That we would, we would get the repairs that we needed and I said now you're doing exactly what I told them you wouldn't do. But I remember and they, you know, they listened and I remember the change came when Annette Abercrombie told them you have built those schools in Vernal twice since you have built Todd and West. We were built in the 50s. You've built those other schools twice. And you could see the shift. And when they went to break, one of the members told me, you're going to get your school. And that was a real changing point in their support for us, I felt like. We got the new school, and since then, a lot of the things that have happened before, you know, years ago they would punish teachers by sending them to Todd. You know, if you're not good, that's where you're going to have to go. And we got a new superintendent and I remember telling him that and he didn't believe me. After he'd been here for a year, he actually apologized to me in a meeting and he said the dance of the lemons will stop. He, he went back, he looked into it and did research and there had been some of that going on. So. It's been really nice to see the support from the district for our school and for our students. And not, as a parent, I spent so much time 
Duchesne school district meetings, UN school district meetings, a whole group of us did, just trying to secure an education in these schools for our students, just to keep our schools here and not have them given away or closed down or, you know, whatever. It's been so nice the past, you know, few years not to have to do that, to be able to feel secure in the education of our children here on the west side of Uinta County. And it's such a good feeling at this school. With the building of the new school, we actually kind of had a funeral for the failing schools. We had flowers and we, we just said, we're getting rid of that. That's going away, that's no more. And we're gonna move ahead in a positive direction. And we have, and we've seen great growth and the community has rallied around and it's been great. You hear the phrase, um, think outside the box. I've said since I started you know, teaching here and working here, I don't think we even have a box. This staff and uh, Mr. Sturmer's done great things, great things for the school as well. You know, he's a good leader and the staff is always willing to jump in. You know, if something comes along and if we feel like it's gonna benefit our students, then they're right there and we just jump in and we do it. And it's such a positive, you know, feeling and, and love for the students with most of the staff. You know, we do have a turnover, they come and they go, but teachers come and usually it's, wow. You know, it's, it's not like that at every school. They said, you don't understand, it's not like that at every school. You know, and so I think that is one of the greatest things here is the staff and how we pull together and work together with each other for the kids.